Education Access Corner. I'm your host, Tiffany Devan, and I am super excited to have back with me at the Access Corner, Ron Felder and Danielle Martin. Welcome back to the Higher Education Access Corner. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. All right. Now, today we have a special treat because our topic today is all about the parent's perspective, and we're going to be talking about colleges and college and career planning. And Danielle and Ron are really, really well equipped to share this information. I'm going to start out by sharing um, Danielle's bio and then immediately follow with Ron's, and then you all will get a feel for why I say they are the perfect people to have this conversation. So I'll start out with Danielle. Danielle is a native of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. She is the mother of 17-year-old identical twin girls. Um, she received her formal education in the Harrisburg and Central Dolphin School Districts. And after graduation, she attended Miller, Millersville University, where she earned a Bachelor of Science in Elementary Education. She then went on to get her master's degree in education with a reading specialist focus from Cabrini College. She is now pursuing her doctoral degree in educational leadership at Temple University. I personally know Danielle, and we're calling her right now Dr. Danny because she is making it happen and she is on her way. Danielle is also currently employed by Temple University Harrisburg campus, and she serves as the academic success coordinator. Now, through this position, Danielle oversees academic scheduling, hires faculty, designs summer and youth programming. She is also the facilitator of one of the top program managers for the campus. Now, TOP stands for Teen Outreach Program, and it provides social and emotional learning to middle school and high school students um, at risk across the state of Pennsylvania. She also serves as the current Central Region Director for the Pennsylvania Black Conference on Higher Education, also known as BACI. She also co-chairs the Education and Business Partnership Committee through the Harrisburg Chamber and CREATED. Prior to coming to Temple, Danielle served as the Admissions Counselor and Dual Enrollment Coordinator for Harrisburg Area Community College for four years. Overall, Danielle has spent 20 years in the field of education, five as a first grade teacher, six working with the Gear Up program through the Gear Up program, it's gaining early awareness in early early awareness and reading for undergraduate programs. She focused on preparing youth by providing career collegiate awareness for middle and high school students through the Harrisburg School District. Whew. I'm supposed to come behind that. <laughs> you gotta go behind that. I don't want to come behind that. Whew. That's a lot, right? <clears throat> what? Good stuff. But now let's talk about Ron. Ron is also equally as impressive. Mm -hmm. Ronald Felder is a higher education access partner for the Pennsylvania Higher Education Assistance Agency. Again, I'm an access partner, so Ron covers the Philadelphia region. So if you're not familiar with Ron, um, just go back and look through some of our videos and some of those other things that we have on our website. You will see Ron's face and become familiar with him. He's been supporting Philadelphia schools, employers, families, and community partners for the last seven years. He was born in Harlem, New York. He's the youngest of five children to a mother who has successfully retired as a New York City elementary teacher. The educational foundation that his mother set is what he attributes as his love for higher education. Ron received his bachelor's degree in accounting from Johnson & Wales University. He is a member of the executive board for Baki, co-director of the Emergent Leadership Program for Baki. He's also a member of the College Access Stakeholders Board for Philadelphia, FAFSA Steering Committee for the School District of Philadelphia, College Prep Roundtable for the East, Pennsylvania Association for Student Financial Aid Administrators, and a committee member of the Pennsylvania Homeless Youth and Foster Care Program. He is also a charter member of the Sigma Alpha Sigma chapter of Phi Beta, Phi Beta, Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporate, which is the first African-American fraternity established in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Whew. All right. So what when I say, about? I don't know about yeah, this, I no lots doctor. of good stuff here, right? No. I feel I feel a little <laughs> under equipped here to talk no. about college and, college, and, no. college and career planning. However, I do think you two are perfect people to help us guide this conversation and to share information with our viewers. The main reason is you all are the professionals who actually are going out every day or used to go out every day, helping students, helping to mold the students, helping them to navigate the entire journey around college and career planning, regardless of whether they want to go into a post-secondary four-year institution, whether it's business school, technical school, trade school, community college, whatever it is that they're hoping to get into, you all were kind of like pouring into those students for so long. Mm -hmm. And what makes it a little different this time, because we're talking about the parent's perspective. And as Danielle said in her bio, she is the mother of 17-year-old mm -hmm. twins who happen to be seniors right now. So she is navigating this part on her own as a parent. Mm -hmm. And we also have Ron, although he has two children, 
he has a son who just recently started a college. So they both now are experiencing it from the, the other side. And this is the, the part that I say, it's scary, mm. but it's probably exciting and it's fun and it's rewarding. We are in it. Oh, knee deep, <laughs> swimming, like finding Nemo. We in this ocean. We are just, it, it, it is what it is. Ooh. So is it really different now? Like you are the professionals who taught people how to do it. Is it really different when it's, you're on the other side? And if so, how? Oh, my. And I'm probably opening up oh. a whole. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, it is. Right? Oh. It is because our expectations are higher. Mm-hmm. Um, we know, and I'm not speaking for you, doctor. Um, we know what's right. We know what's wrong. We know uh, what what to do. And it's really hard, especially my son's at Westchester, to deal with a lax teenager who just doesn't have the, the as I would say, the genesis sais quoi, to, to get there where you know you see the potential. Um, it's just, it's very different because we know what we, we're very young folks at this table. We're very, very young folks at this table. <laughs> um, and our, our little hurdles in our life, we we still remember it's fresh for us. So we want to take those hurdles off our, off our children's um, life track. And they just, just want to run right into them. And we're like, I'm trying to make it easy for you. Um, I think what also makes it a challenge is that you know, we're, we are well equipped. We know this yeah. information like the back of our hands. But it's the it's the fact that the information is coming from my mom. You know, it's coming from my dad. You know, and so sometimes it's a challenge um to have the roles separated. You know, I'm for, not for them. No, not not, I'm not, not us. You know. She that's I'm um, glad you're an elementary school teacher. I'm not separating nothing. <laughs> but from I, the, Danielle's perspective, yeah, what my, she's saying is mm-hmm. yeah. it's easier to take that information sometimes from the right. You, professional mm-hmm. as opposed to mom like my you're girls cool yeah. my you're girls cool could sit and have a conversation with you because you are mr ron right you know what i'm saying and i probably could have a, a, a conversation with your son yep. maybe because i'm somebody completely outside of the household so sometimes as in these spaces and then it would become well mr ron said okay well yeah so that is why too i'm glad to have a good network of mm-hmm. people so mm-hmm. that I can send you to the Mr. Rons <laughs> or, you know, the Miss Latanya Georges of the world. Yeah, there you um, go. Because I know that person is going to get the same point across. 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 It just comes from a It just comes from it. So, you know, the messenger matters sometimes. Yeah. Good point. Now let's back up just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Let's go easy on on your on your kids. We're going we're going I'm I'm yeah. I'm rooting for them. It's not gonna be as challenging. Let's back up a little bit. How did you, as parents and college professionals, prepare your kids uh, when they were like maybe ninth grade or even prior to that mm-hmm. about those post-secondary plans? What are some of the steps and tips that you could even give to parents to say, hey, preparation is key? Not even whether or not they took the, the, yeah. the advice yet, but mm-hmm. what are some of the things and tools that you kind of could share with parents who are about to go through this process? I think for me, um, conversations started happening, you know, prior to high school, prior to middle school, you know, we were five and six years old talking about, you know, how important education is. Or um, when I worked in the Harrisburg School District and I served as one of the senior advisors, they saw me dress up with my cap and gown on to to work graduation with the Mm -hmm. students. So I think um, it's having conversations at, you know, down on their level, however old they are. Um, and then providing examples. Um, so for me right now, my girls are seniors and I'm wrapping up a doctoral program. Um, they have seen my struggles in this program. <laughs> they have seen my tears, you know, so we're all kind of, I'm, I'm allowing them to see um, the human side of mom, you know, and, and Mom is on to higher education, but these are all the things that come with this. These are the challenges. These are the celebrations. And so I think one of the best things a parent can do is provide the example. And if you're not in the position, if you're not going to school right now, if you know somebody who's close to the family, allow them to see that. Exposure, planting the seed is kind of what I'm getting from you. And I think those are really 
key points. You plant the seed and you plant it early. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to start. And sometimes I hear, and we all know, we don't start to hear these conversations from some families until the senior year, second half. And it's kind of like the student doesn't know where to begin. Mm -hmm. Parents don't know where to begin. They haven't even done any career exploration. I haven't th started to think about those schools. So I think it is key mm -hmm. that, like you said, you expose them early. I also think it's, it's a pretty amazing that you're allowing them um, in to see the raw mm -hmm. truth of, mm -hmm. you know, your journey. But it, as you're going on, because you're you're working on that doctorate now, but they've seen you, like you said, you're, you're mm -hmm. putting on the cap and the gown. They see why. Mm -hmm. They see you moving on to the masters. They see, you know, a lot of different things, whether it's you or someone else. So I think being able to visualize that mm -hmm. makes a difference for a student, makes a difference for students as well. Now, whether or not they're listening to your advice or they're seeing it from someone else, and maybe they don't have a family right. member, but there are mentors mm -hmm. that are out there they could still possibly connect to. And make um, it fun, yeah. right? And so one of the things I used to do is every time I took my students on a college tour, I would buy my girls t-shirts from the schools that we visited. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was their thing when they were little, like, did you bring us a t-shirt? <laughs> you know, I brought you a t-shirt from Delaware State, you mm -hmm. know? Um, they, so they, then they had these collections of t-shirts from schools mm -hmm that maybe they didn't know all the things about when they were little. They just knew they had a cool t-shirt and they knew that if they went to college, they could get they this could get cool t-shirt too. So, What about you, Ryan? How, what, how, what was the preparation like, period like for you? So I love our doctor right here. <laughs> Stop it. It's very, she, she's very uh, positive, the optimism of it. I love it. Um, I had my son at 22. So being a 22 year old man, Black man having a, 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 a half Salvadorian, half black young man. I was very raw with my with my son. Now my daughter, she gets a nice part of me now, but from the beginning, I, I, probably about three or four, I'm just I've always been stern with him. Listen, there's no room in this world for uneducated black man. It's going to be extremely hard if you don't have this education. Um, I've kept him around a, a certain core people whether it be educated or uneducated, so he can see how to navigate, so he can hear these stories. Um, you know, I'm very raw with him. Just listen, you don't have an education, it's gonna be hard for you to make the salary you want. Mm -hmm. He got champagne wishes, but without that education, you, yeah, you gonna have an Aquafina <laughs> dinner. So at the end of the day, no, we're not knocking out completely. No, we're not. You know, I'm I'm <laughs> more of a, I'm a more polar spring type of guy. But you know, at the end of the day, it's like, yo, homeboy, I need you to be better than me. Mm -hmm. Okay, I need you to understand that everything that I'm providing for you didn't come easy. Right. At, at 22 to have what I have, or to give him, it was very very hard. I had mm -hmm. to sacrifice, and he saw it. He understands it now mm -hmm. because of his hiccups. But he says, you know what? You're right. So how did you get that's like to gold. start? Huh? <laughs> what? Say that again. I yeah. said, that's like gold. gold. When they great. tell you that you're right, yeah, woo, like, oh. you better relish on that. Right. Right. Because, you know? so, so what did you do to kind of help him with the wanting to do the career exploration or the college exploration and to get him engaged to, I've always, to say, okay, let me let me figure this out for me? I don't so I, I never let him settle or see me settle for mediocrity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It will not be accepted. So you have to want to aspire to do something. So he's always said, I, and when he was small, if we thought he was going to be an engineer. I was like, yes. And then he turned around, flipped us on high school, and said he wanted to be, he wanted to work for ESPN. Okay, cool. Around ninth grade, we weren't even talking about colleges. How are you going to get to your career? And then he figured out what school would be best for him, mm. and would, would work on his internship. Because I always told him it's. Education is amazing, definitely having that core, but you got to also figure out how to propel yourself through that if you want to get through it. So if you're at a school, how is that school going to get you to your career? So he figured out what school is going to best for him to get him to his career working at ESPN okay. one day. And I just, I'm, I don't slack up. I don't accept mediocrity. I, t I tell him, hey, listen, this is why students are failing. I show him the numbers. I mm -hmm. show him the minority depletion of numbers. I Black and brown students are not graduating in Pennsylvania. Right. Right. They are not being educated. Just because you live in the suburbs don't mean you're going to succeed. Well, you don't. doesn't mean that you're going to succeed. doesn't mean that you're going to have a house in the cul-de-sac. He sees these things. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
even though I live in the suburbs now, I'm gonna keep him from from keeping projects. So I always kept him grounded. Yeah, okay. Just say, and I and one thing I love that Dr. D just said, if I can't explain it to him, I've had certain individuals in his life who were mentors to say, yo, this is what your dad is saying. He'll come back to me and it's oh. Mm-hmm. I, hear right it. Mm-hmm. I hear it. I hear it differently. Um, but it's just it's all about watching them, believing them, letting them make some mistakes, but also just tell them to be raw. I think I think a lot of kids nowadays are coddled. Yes. Uh, and I'm glad she said yes because she's more of an educator. You know? <laughs> I think I a lot of kids are not being exposed to saying, "Listen, that 2.0 GPA will not carry you." Mm-mm. So, so let's talk a little <laughs> deeper on that part because when you're saying, I think a lot of kids are being coddled. Mm-hmm. We're behind the scenes on the other end. So, mm-hmm. as professionals, you do see how sometimes um, parents interact, and of course, we know their intentions. They mean well. Mm-hmm. Um, right. You want to project your kids. You want to make sure that you don't know, want to make it a little easier for them. You don't want them to struggle as hard. But what are some of the hiccups that you think uh, parents are making? Um, when we're saying they're they're coddling them too much, but being prepared. Um, mm. For that other side. I'm sorry. This camera right here. Parents, let your kids know at an early stage how it feels to get fired. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. And why? Because that pain as an adult is something else. Because remember, and when we get fired, we have to still provide for our children. Mm. We have to still keep them lights on. We have to still pay that mortgage, that rent. We have to get them groceries because those kids eat more than us. You have to show these kids what it's like to fail and say, all right, now persevere. Mm-hmm. Push through. Push wow. through. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She, Dr. D mm-hmm. just said her, her daughter saw her cry, mm-hmm. laugh, smile, emotion through her journey. So guess what? Those twins are seeing it. So kind of. a lot. Well, it's transparency, right? Yeah. Allow them mm-hmm. to see. That you, mom is a person too. Mom mm-hmm. has feelings. I, mm-hmm. I just, I just had full transparency since we're talking about it. I just had a whole meltdown on Sunday behind this this dissertation. <laughs> My kids see that. Um, I, that doesn't that doesn't take anything away from you, doesn't make you and weak. it doesn't make you weak. It doesn't make you less of a parent for them to be able to see who who you are here. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing I will say. And this is what I'm learning too. You've raised an amazing individual, um, whether you did it by yourself, whether you had a village, what have you, trust that, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Trust that you did a good job, know that you did a good job and it's okay. They are equipped with everything that you've ever taught them, whether you've taught them that or someone else in the village has or they fell and got back up on their own they still learn the lesson and they're equipped to leave the nest and be the individual that God designed them to be it's okay so I'm learning that right now that I feel like you know what I've prepared these two to leave to leave my house all of the blood, sweat, and literal tears. Um, they are equipped to step on Temple's campus in the fall and be so you've all announced that to they the world. Oh, this is where you're announced to the world that right. decided to go. Um, that they are officially now the newest owls on the block. And what? they've both been accepted to Tyler School of Art, which is their oh, dream. Right. And another thing, parents, allow your kids to live their dreams. Correct. That's big. You have to just let them be support there. that. Yes, it does not. They you can't create a mini version of you. It they gonna be who they happen. gonna be. And <laughs> that, that's cool. hard though. That so, is so like, hard. A mm-hmm. lot of times you will hear parents say, "You know what? Well, they want to go into this, but that's not realistic for them. I see them going here, or they should do this because you know they'll make more money, or they'll do this." So it's a it's a struggle between their happiness and them pursuing their passion. Mm-hmm. Or their parents saying, "This is where I see you. This was my dream, or it's my dream for you." Don't, um, don't try to live vicariously through them. Allow right. them to flourish. Allow them to chase that passion. Um, mine are very super passionate about art, and they are amazing artists. Mm-hmm. I tell them that, and from a supportive um, standpoint, 
can't nobody tell me that I don't have the best artists right. in the state. Okay. Well, so support them in whatever in it is them. that they mm-hmm. want to do. Believe in them. Speak life into them. Manifest. Show them how to. Show them how manifestation works. Mm-hmm. You know, speak, speak, whatever you speak into existence is coming. So let that be love. Let that be um, sometimes tough love. Let that be transparency. Um, be adaptable. We yeah. have to be. We have to constantly. We're always changing with our children. And then they're teaching us things. And yes. It's, it's a wonderful journey, but you have to just be adaptable because when they buck back, and it's, it is going to happen, you have to be able to say, all right, how do I... How do I receive it? Mm-hmm. How do I digest it? How do I regurgitate it mm-hmm. into uh, into a level of uh, positivity? So a couple of things right now, because you all are giving them lots of good information, <laughs> yes. right? Mm-hmm. Some things that I'm really hearing that I'm hoping that the people who are listening are taking away is that, number one, um, exposure was key. Planting mm-hmm. the seed early. Mm-hmm. Exposure is really key as well. Um, believing in them, supporting them. Um, Pouring into them, but it's also about that parent. Mm-hmm. It's not just about what you see in your kids. Kind of taking a, a look at yourself mm-hmm. to say, you know, what what type of yes. um, image am I projecting to them? Like you said, you know, you may get fired. It's nice to know, you know, how you rebound or how you can mm-hmm. rebound. You have to be resilient because you know what? We all have some successes. We all have some failures in life, but they don't have to remain failures. They can be those lessons. Right. Um, and they always say, you know, losing builds character. I believe that, you know, yes. I've always believed that. And a lot of times students today don't really know how to rebound after that right. mm-hmm. loss. They, it's kind of like, okay, you know what? I didn't get into my favorite school, so I'm just not going to go to school. And I always say, no, a dream defer. It's deferred. Um, you right. might have to find a different path, but mm-hmm. you don't just stop. Mm-hmm. And that's whether it's school, whether it's the career or something else. Right. So maybe reminding those parents to kind of say, support your kids, still root for them, but it's okay if they if they, they make some some mistakes and let them fall while they're there mm-hmm. in your home, in your guidance right underneath you because you're that support system to keep them lifted and keep them going. Um, and parents, because they, and if they make mistakes, you are not a failure. You mm-hmm. did not fail in raising them or doing the best you can or could by them because they made mistakes. Allow them to make mistakes. It's okay. Uh, it hurts sometimes. Um, especially, especially for my younger parents, um, you got to understand that you're growing to, and the parent that you were when you gave birth to that child mm-hmm. is not going to be the same parent when that child hits 18. Because the way I thought when he was born and now he's 19, Completely totally different, different parent. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, it's okay. Be prepared for the growth and the journey, right? Yeah. Be prepared. And a little bit of your parents are going to creep into you. A lot of your parents are going to creep in. <laughs> one, of your, one of your parents or your grandparents that, or your uncle or aunt that was pivotal in your life. Who definitely They're coming. It's going to They're come coming out. out. It's going to come out. <laughs> so what you're saying is both of you have had those times where what? you opened your mouth and you're like, whoa. Mm. That's, that's and then I, I have to sit in it like, ooh, I sound just like mom. <laughs> Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. It, it's pretty funny. Actually. So in other words, mm-hmm. now you realize your parents were giving great advice, right? Absolutely. They were listening. Absolutely. So if we have students on here listening, you know, go easy on your parents. They really do because know they what know. they're talking they about. They know. They know. Um, As you all say, they be knowing. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> there you go. So a couple things I want to ask now is we know that, Danielle, you have two girls, mm-hmm. two young ladies about to head off to Temple as freshmen. Ryan, you have one at Westchester right now, mm. currently in his freshman year. Yeah. Um, all the preparation and everything like that. How's it going? Where are we at? Uh, ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> ladies first. Um, whoo, Lord. So it's scholarship season. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're in the process of doing that. It's, you know, letters of recommendation on top of uh, looking for prom gowns. On top of their prom just happens to be on their 18th birthday. On top of mm. graduations for them and myself. So parents of seniors, it, it's looking a little crazy right now, right? Um, so, yeah, that's where we are. That's, that's where you are. And, and this is, vacations. Right. <laughs> and this is really why they've also seen the transpar- mm. transparent part of me, too, because it can be completely overwhelming. 
Now, everyone may not have your actual journey right now as senior. No, so I do tell everyone, don't it, be afraid. But don't be afraid. But it can still it be can realistic because it may not be, you know, that everybody's in school at and the same I say time. That, it could be tied to something else as well. I so, say that as a point of transparency for people who are in this work. Mm-hmm. We're in this work. We do it daily. Mm-hmm. And it's still, it's still hard. <laughs> it's still a challenge. Mm-hmm. And it's so that's why I say that. But, you know, you, you have people to lean on. Mm-hmm. You know, I have financial aid questions. I call her. That's not my, that's not my ministry. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's okay, you know, to lean on your village members. How's it going, man? Oh, man. Um, go, go easy on my guy. So, right. <laughs> yeah, I had to think about that. I had to really be patient. Do, everything you just said. Um, <laughs> it is, it is really, it's. It's going good. It's going great now. He's in a really good. He's in his groove. Okay. Um, but for me, I I always have to remind him like everything you're doing, I still remember fresh. Like I'm not the I'm not in the retirement community yet. Dude. So <laughs> everything you're doing in college, I remember how you're doing and how and how you're moving. He is finding his lane. He has expressed things that he wants to do. He has been in positions where he felt extremely uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, he has finally witnessed colorism mm-hmm. from uh, from a biracial uh, kid, mm-hmm. um, and that has definitely uh, opened his eyes mm-hmm. wide open. He understands the difference of high school homework and college homework now. Mm-hmm. It's, Two different perspectives, and he knows what a deadline is now. <laughs> so for that, but more importantly, what's what makes me happy? We had this con- actually we had this conversation, which is so crazy. I, don't judge me what I'm about to say. At twelve thirty this morning, because my bedtime is really messed up. Uh, he just he understood the values of paying for college and having a free education. Mm. And how it's going to propel him in the future, mm-hmm. and he he really he really was coming to conclude like, ooh, some people need to save their money because rainy days do happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's cool. So he's experiencing life. Yeah. He's at that point some, where he somewhat, did college, and now he's starting to somewhat. Okay, he's just he's he's partying a little too much for me, but yeah. I, However, that's that's my but next that's, but, that, but that's part of it. That's a part of it. That's part of it, and I have to let him grow. I just I just remind him that it's a balance. Mm-hmm. It is a balance. That's and, where I was going. Mm-hmm. And it's okay to have fun because mm-hmm. life has to be fun. Mm-hmm. But you have to be about your business first mm-hmm. too, because remember what you're here for. That work. That's. I'm glad you said that because what I wanted to know was. You know, as parents, as the professionals, how do you personally um, help your your kids and anyone listening um, who has kids understand that there has to be balance? Because once they hit that that college campus, whether they're staying at home commuting or they're going away from home, they are now going to be considered adults, Mm -hmm. young adults, Mm -hmm. um, and their maturity levels will vary. Mm -hmm. And yes, you do want them to have always say let them have the full college experience. You want to have the fun. There will be some parties. There will be organizations that you might want to participate with. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're there for a purpose. You're there to get your your, your studies completed, get your education. Mm-hmm. Um, and you you want to make sure they have that full balance. And then there's so many things going on mentally and emotionally. They still want to be healthy uh, mm-hmm. mentally and emotionally. Yes. How do you get, um, or what tips do you have for your students, for the parents to help remind the students that balance is key? And how do you go about that? Mm-hmm. So time management is important, I think, prior to. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they're going to learn the lessons throughout, but, you know, any anything you can teach or provide as an example for time management. So, for, for example, my girls are heavily involved in competition bands. Mm-hmm. Band season <laughs> in my house is from July to June. Mm. Marching band, marching bands from July. I, I have to give you the full picture. Wait, I have to laugh well, because she I, I know because she knows, and mm. I, I hear she those knows, stories. Right? About so, things. marching band in my from March. Okay, so marching band is July through December. 
competition indoor drum line is from December to April. So we talk about balance all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that if you want to participate in an extracurricular activity, your, those grades got to be on point. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the same conversation too moving forward. But the key is I'm not going to be there. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to balance this? So it's having a teachable moment in the conversation and then kind of like weaning them or, you know, allowing them to have that moment mm -hmm. and learn mm -hmm. what's important and, and what's not. Sometimes that may come with a fall and some brush burns. And, All right, get yourself back up. We've learned mm -hmm. the lesson. Now that we've learned the lesson, we're going back to the same thing. What is it? Is it going to look any different? Right. Are you going to change it up? Are you, because the definition of insanity is what? Doing the same thing Doing over and repeating and the same. And we, have, and we have those, they know the definition yeah. of insanity. Stop mm -hmm. doing the same thing that's not working and expect a, a different result. Mm -hmm. And so, again, sometimes it's, it's having those, those tough conversations like, okay, here's the information. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said what I said. Now you go try. Mm -hmm. When you when you fall, you get up, Experience and then we're gonna try again. Them that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Experience does mm -hmm. teach. So that perseverance too that you were talking mm -hmm. about, because if you want it bad enough, you are going to make we'll sure you are going yeah. to balance yeah. to mm -hmm. make sure that it happens. Yeah. Another question I have for you all: mm -hmm. What surprised you all about navigating this process once you experienced it? Because you know all of the things. You mm -hmm. use a checklist. That you know as professionals, I, check, 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 I what you should do. Moment just now head, what surprised so. you when you were experiencing it yourselves? Like, whoa, mm. this is real or this is different. It feels different than what mm. I've always explained to people. If I go first, you, I, it's going to be hard. <laughs> it's going to be hard <laughs> to come by. Um, it was twofold for me. Um, from a parental perspective, I saw a lot of schools that were very slack on the, on the mission side. Mm. I did not like the professionalism. I was very disapproving of how they move okay. um, from um, from a, uh, from a professional side I enjoyed how my son wings were expanding every school we went to we went to I felt like we went to about 30 schools. Mm -hmm. I mean, throughout the Eastern Seaboard. Mm -hmm. I feel like I was traveling every weekend from HBCUs to predominantly, um, I do not like using that terminology. I do not like you. Predominantly diverse institutions. I do not like using PWIs. I can't stand this Philly thing. I don't know about it. Um, or even in a trade school. Mm -hmm. I really watched him flourish and ask questions that I have taught him throughout the years mm -hmm. of, Hey, uh, Miss Tiffany, what is this communication department going to do for me, my career? Mm -hmm. How much is it a year and not just, he, he really went in there, how much is a year and not just four years? Um, well, he, I'm sorry, he went to ask, how much is for four years? And what's the difference of this dorm and that dorm? He was asking these questions. You right? were pleasantly I surprised was like, that right. he was paying attention. But you were also proud. Yeah. Right, because right. I, right. I didn't have to say certain things. Right. Uh, I'm not going to mention the school, but we did a Zoom uh, minis uh, missions uh, called one of, and I felt like he was he was grilling the, the missions rep on more about that school than this, the mission rep even knew. And I was like, oh, well, let me walk out this room. Like, yeah, it was. <laughs> all right. I was highly impressed because he listened to all of my and he he sees us through mm -hmm. Tiffany. He sees us through our uh, field work and he sees me, and everybody kind of knows who I am and knows who mm. you are. So. He wanted to have his own identity. And yes. That was, and I was okay. like, yeah, all right. Yes. All right. Let me stand back and feel like uh, Mufasa mm -hmm. while Simba mm -hmm. wants to take this pride land over there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got you over That there. right there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I would have to agree with that. Okay. I, I would have to agree with that because they always tell me, Mom, you know everybody, and you know I've told you that every, so, yeah. so every really time somebody true. sees us, they say, "Oh, you're Danielle Martin's daughter." They have to say your whole name. You know everybody. No. Um, so yeah, I fully I stand in full agreement with that whole, all of that. That's so true. Okay. Before we wrap up, 
you guys gave us a whole lot. So we're going to do a quick recap. But what's the best advice you have for three different folks? For the student, for the parent, and then for the expert like yourselves who are navigating um, as parents. So we'll start with the, the, the parent. One good, strong, for the student, one good, strong advice that you would have for the student. And you can be speaking as a parent, a professional, and or, you know, a little bit of both, who mm-hmm. you are. Best advice regarding this process. Wow. One thing. A piece. Well, let's try and get it. We'll we'll ask as many, one or two. Ask as many questions as possible. Okay. Make yourself feel vulnerable. Vulnerability is key. Okay. Um, for the student, um, be coachable and listen. Um, and time management. Learn those skills now because mm-hmm. you will need them in college and you will need them in adult life too. Absolutely. For the parent. Mm, it's okay. <laughs> there you go. It's okay. No, I'm it's, totally it's different. Okay. Uh, it's it's okay. Um I don't know what else to say. Like it's a learning experience mm-hmm. for you too. So be open to mm-hmm. learning some things. You're not always going to be the teacher in the situation. For the parent, mm-hmm. we're gonna go through a lot of financial ups and downs. But you gotta be consistent when you when from the beginning of that child being born of saving some form of funds oh, yeah. for for school. It doesn't even matter if they wanna go to the Ivy League schools to just regular community college start from the beginning because when they hit 18, whatever money that you got saved up, that is going to help drastically with with any type of cushion. So start saving right now. I mean, listen. <laughs> Today. 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 Once you find out that you about to give birth. Today. That day. Start, start saving. You, 529 you set plans. it up right then and there because Bank accounts that you just put money into. You'd be amazed what $20 every two weeks for 18 years will turn out to be when that child hits you with a bill of, I got a $3,000 or $4,000 bill. That comes in their name. That comes in their (laughs) name name. 45 days before they start Mm -hmm. dating. Good point. Mm. Good point. Now, what about the the professionals who are experiencing it as parents? And I think Mm. you pretty much have already Mm. summed it up with your expressions and you both said at the same time, mm. so I think that, that might be part of that the answer. answer. Mm. Um, just just be, con- be consistent. That's yeah. It. Be consistent. And transparent. Yeah. That's possible. It's okay. If I just, you can't enroll every student. Don't try to sell them on something that you just not. Tell a student, tell a student what they're going to get. If a kid's not a city kid, don't force them to go to school in the city college, like in the city environment. If a kid is a small college learning, expose them to that. So stop viewing people as numbers and yeah, see them as humans. As humans. Mm-hmm. Good point. Quantity. We we know. Profes- Qual- I'm sorry, quality over quantity. Professionally, we know that enrollment's down, and yeah. you know it, it took a really deep spike when COVID hit. Like, we know we know all of mm-hmm. that. But at the end of the day, people want transparency and they want to be treated mm-hmm. um, as a person. And so do that. And if your school is not fit for this person, don't try to sell them the bells and the whistles. It is what it is. Make a, a you know, refer them mm-hmm. to a where they could, where yeah. they could flourish. Yeah. And remember the transparency. The objective is to get educated. And there are so many different types of schools. They come in all shapes and sizes, all at different price points. And I do believe that if everybody is doing their research, if everybody is from the parents, from the students and the the educators, if everyone tied to that whole higher education piece is doing what they can do for the students, they will help them find the perfect fit for them. Um, Mm -hmm. That can be affordable, where they can flourish, where they can grow get the education that they need to go into the careers that they want to go into. And then at that point, it's a win-win for everybody. Exactly. Um, I think this was good because it was real. And I wanted you two on here because a lot of times people assume that the people on the other side of the professionals have it all down and they don't experience the challenges. We do not. And, and that is not that. true. You experience not the same bit. challenges. But sometimes you also have that other side that you can kind of explain to students 
And maybe even your kids are going to be on here listening and they'll say, hey, you know what? I'm going to listen to everything my mom says is mom or dad says is dad going forward. We don't know for sure, but, you know, I wish you all the best. I wish you all the best with, mm -hmm. uh, with the rest of your mm -hmm. journey and that they actually end up going to the schools of their dreams, that he actually enjoys and continues to, to flourish and enjoys his time You got three years left on my there. payroll. <laughs> three years left on my payroll. Oh, stop it. That's it. That's my, mm -hmm. But enjoy the journey. Right. Yeah. Thanks for sharing mm -hmm. um, the inside mm -hmm. part to that. For those of you here on the Higher Education <laughs> Access Quarter, we thank you for joining us today. Again, big thanks to Ron Felder and Danielle Martin, my guests today, the parents, the professionals who have it all, who know it all. Um, <laughs> who, who, who are stressed? Just tried. Who just tried? Who just tried? Just trying to navigate. Just trying to world. navigate. But again, thank you all for joining us for the Higher Education Access Corner. We hope you tune in to more episodes.